All right, so this is a total internal reflection related problem. This is an important concept when you're learning about reflection and refraction. At the boundary between different materials, you often have some kind of combination in the real world, some kind of combination of reflection and refraction that happens. And this is a really important phenomenon within that behavior. So um, what they're telling us here is that we have a piece of plastic in air and the critical angle of that at that boundary, right, is known to be 37.3 degrees. So that's great information right there. And then the question is asking, will the critical angle be different if we take the plastic and we immerse it in water? And if so, let's calculate that. Um, they give us some values for the end value of air and water there. So um, yeah, I mean, you know, pause and think about this, but the critical angle is going to change because the refraction angle is changing, right? Will be different when you're going between water and plastic if you think about Snell's law. So let's just first consider the air plastic case and see what information we can extract from that. So what we're told is the critical angle in the air plastic case so we'll start there. We're told that the critical angle is equal to 37.3 degrees. And I want you to have in your mind what's going on here, right? When we say critical angle, we're talking about the angle at which light will be approaching the air, right? It approaches the faster medium is how I think about it. So light is um, coming through the plastic, approaching the plastic air interface, and is refracted away from the surface normal because it's moving into a faster material, right? A faster medium. And um, this, what we call total internal reflection, happens when that um, refracted angle is 90 degrees. And what I haven't drawn in here yet, but I'm going to draw right now, is the reflected ray then. So what this means is that you have, instead of having any refraction here that happens because my refracted angle is at 90, I have what we then call total internal reflection. So I have this reflected ray. This follows the law of reflection, obviously. So this is at the critical angle there as well. So this is the critical angle case. And any angle larger than that will also achieve this condition. OK. So this information, knowing this angle here, helps me to be able to figure out the end value for the plastic, because we're given the air and the water, but not the plastic. But now that I know the critical angle, I can find that. And I can just apply Snell's law here, right? The um, end value for plastic times the sine of the critical angle is equal to the end value for air, which is my other medium, times the sine of 90 degrees. So I know often in the book there's like a special equation for total internal reflection but you don't need a, any kind of special equation for that right because um, you always know that the refracted angle when you're looking at total internal reflection you can just pop in 90 degrees for that refracted angle and that's really the derivation for that equation so I can then solve for the end value of plastic it's going to be the end value of air divided by the sine of the critical angle and that gives me my 1 over the sine of 37.3 that was given. So I get 1.65. Here is my end value for plastic. And remember that these uh, um, end values, they don't have units, right? It's basically a ratio. So we consider it's more like a coefficient. OK, so now let's look at the, we're going to switch gears and look at the air. Um, the no it's not air pla it's water plastic that case and i want to know what the critical angle i'll call this theta c prime since it's a different critical angle what is that um, so it's basically the same kind of diagram as above right we're considering what is the new critical angle for that case so let's look at our snell's law equation what would that look like here n value for plastic times sine of this new critical angle equals the end value for water times sine of, again, 90 degrees. That is what describes something as, as um, total internal reflection. So the sine value for my new critical angle 
is then going to be equal to the ratio of N water and N plastic, if I solve for that there. So the angle, that's what's being asked for here, is just going to be the arc sine of that ratio. And whenever I'm looking at an argument of a sine or cosine function, um, too, I know that the argument of a sine or cosine function needs to be in radians or degrees, right? But when I'm looking at the argument of an arc sine here, I know that I need to have no, that needs to be a dimensionless value. So that's always a good check for you too when you're doing that, when you're just kind of filling in those brackets or those parentheses, look at it and ask, make sure that that's a dimensionless value. So if I um, go ahead and finish that, then that'll give me the arc sine 1.33 over what we got there above 1.65, the end value for plastic. And that results in degrees at 53.7 degrees. So that's my new critical angle for the water plastic interface.